Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Beats. I am your host, Kelly Kennedy, and I am very fortunate to be able to share my tribe as I travel across the globe and meet incredible scientists and doctors and all sorts of practitioners and continue to expand that tribe to help engage and encourage and empower you to learn how your body really works. Because what we know from our heart to yours is that you have all the innate wisdom inside you to heal and that our job is now naturally oriented therapists, medically enlightened doctors and specialists available here at Not Meds Global. The Beats podcast is about helping you understand that you have that power inside and what you need to do to help engage it, to constantly upregulate your ecosystem. Thank you so much for being part of our community. If this resonates with you, please go ahead and share this episode. We are always open to your comments and your questions as always. And welcome back to this week's episode of The Beats. Welcome back to the beats today with Kelly Kennedy and one of my dear honored guests, Moira LeBlanc Bianco, Moira Lo Bianco. Did I say it right? Moira Lo Bianco. That's perfect. And what I would say is she's more Italian than Dr. Caratola because we got to just set the stage to know that. But we met uh, Moira a couple, I don't know, about a month ago now when we were at the BRMI event. Um, at which I and I and Moira all were speaking um, at that event. And I've been exposed to sound therapy, as you all know, I love Sound of Soul. That's the point of this podcast is to educate people about our inner healing. But Moira, I'm not crying, but really has a gift and really resonates with myself and my family. And I appreciate her on so many levels, but when, and I didn't get the opportunity to feel the gift of her therapy, but everybody else in my world did and completely felt like, first of all, many of them were like that hour wasn't long enough. I wanted five hours with her. And she worked her little hiney off that weekend, seeing so many people till 10 o'clock at night because she is so heart centered and she wanted to make sure that everybody got to experience sound therapy and all the different ways to, to understand it. And she is not just a sound therapist, but didn't you go to Juilliard as well, Moira? Well, I was working there, um, but uh, yeah, I'm a professional musician, I'm a composer and a pianist. Yes. Yeah. So, and you can hear her beautiful voice once just hearing her voice helps you relax. So really a huge welcome Moira to our podcast today. Thank you for spending the time and doing this. Thank you, my dear Kelly. You know that I love you so much and your family as well. And it's an honor for me to be here with you today. Well, I am excited if we can just dive right in <laughs> yes. and start talking about sound <laughs> therapy. I think mm -hmm. it's really um, advanced a lot in the last few years as far as people's awareness, right? And so 10 years ago, you never heard about sound therapy. And now it's, there's things popping up all over. Oh, come to this bowl session or whatever. Can you explain sound therapy from your definition? And then we can talk about the different ways to apply it. Yes. So uh, first of all, um, when we talk about sound therapy, we want to focus our attention on sound and sound already means many different things because sound is both the audible phenomenon phenomenon that we can hear and um, but it's also vibration so already within one word sound we have the core principles of sound therapy which is both brain entrainment and physical entrainment when we talk about brain entrainment, we also want to think of music as well, music, sound, any type of sound. And this has to do also with psychoacoustics, meaning how we respond to sound um, from a psychological perspective, emotional perspective. 
if you ask me, because you know I am a professional musician, I know that when I compose something or when I perform something, the way to impact my audience, if you will, is to uh, create a type of work that um, the audience can identify with. And if you identify with that, then you can respond, you can connect. Uh, so this is one important aspect of sound that it's also shared with uh, music, obviously. And then there is the physical entrainment, so the vibrational parts, the actual frequencies, the hertz, right? And that has to do with um, the interaction with sound as a sound body, so itself, a sound body itself, within, with the body, within the body, around the body. And uh, so the approach that I have is one-on-one um, -on -one sessions only because I like to work uh, with uh, individual on their uh, specific case, you know, and uh, condition, if any. And um, I work with um, therapeutic grade Himalayan singing bowls as well as tuning forks, different type of uh, sets, meaning different type of tuning. And, uh, and I also use the gong. Um, so as you can see, I love metal instruments. And, um, and the reason why I love this type of instruments is because they are very rich in overtones. So when we think of sound, uh, even though we have this um, illusion that if I sing, so it's one note, it's actually a compound. So that's the resulting sound is um, a composition itself of different overtones, uh, the, the harmonic series. So when we use this type of instruments, um, we have a rich amount of overtones that if we um, compare that to other type of instruments are more effective because more overtones, more um, type of uh, you know frequencies, specific type of frequencies, therefore different type of vibrations, therefore um, more effective in my opinion, humble opinion, uh, just way to um, you know to to help. So. For those, I just want to reiterate what you said in case somebody didn't make the audible connection because not everybody can listen as well when, when your beautiful accent that I love. But um, so your brain and physical body are both entrained with a sound. The sound mm -hmm. is both audible and vibration. You like to use metal like in tuning forks or your Himalayan um, sound bowls. Um, and the gong, which the reason you use as because they're richer in overtones, which Correct. is exactly what Rasmus says in the Sound of Soul is that overtones are the ones that have the biggest affinity because they are this multiple. It's a spectrum. Yeah, it's a spectrum of uh, vibrations, mm -hmm. and and those vibrations are affecting not. They're, they themselves are their own entity, those sound waves, but then they're coming into our body. Yeah. That's when you said with on the, around the body as well as inside the body, because mm -hmm. as Rasmus puts, you cannot escape frequency and vibration. Nope. And so it goes out. So, okay. So we, we've got the yes. basis. So of that's exactly, yes, that's the reason. So when we understand that the vibration is both absorbed on a cellular level, but also impact our brain, then you understand we are already um, have, having a holistic approach, uh, the, the body as a whole. So body and mind that is impacted by the sound. So the way I like to work is to start from the biofield. So I work around the body first and I use two assessment balls each of them, they have, you know, uh, different type of frequencies. So one is bigger, the other one is smaller. And I just go around the body and I pick up things. So I just listen, Kelly, really. And uh, I listen to the micro um, altering of sounds within um, the overtone series. So within, you know, the balls itself. 
Um, and sometimes, you know, oh, I just have to stay there until I see that that sound goes back to what I like to hear. And then I go around and then I get closer and closer and then I start working on the body in conjunctions with both the chakra system and the meridians. Um, and so I use uh, different type of mallets because again, if you have different type of tones, different type of sound quality, different type of um, uh, overtones come out. And so you can actually have different effects on the body. Some are more soothing, relaxing, others are more energizing. It depends what the client needs in that specific moment. I generally like to, if it's, you know, the first session, uh, obviously when, when then you see people um, consistently, then you do the work more in depth. But if we want to give an idea of what um, the first session will be, I like to um, them to experience both so that they leave the session energized. This is very important to me because when a client comes in, you want to disengage them from uh, the outside world, which uh, for me, it means disengaging them from the beta state and so I also work with uh, withdraw of the senses. That's why I make them with the beta state. Is that what you said? I just want to clarify. disengaging. Yes, this from the beta state. The beta state, which is yes. the kind of a sympathetic tone, if you Correct. will, of like acute awareness of all the activity going on versus uh, and she's talking about brain waves for those. Correct. To, yes, you know, we're talking about brain waves. So, okay. you know, they, they they lay down in Shavasana, who is familiar with this term, you know, supine position, constructive rest. And I also work with the withdrawal of senses. That's why I make them wear uh, eye masks so that they can just focus on listening. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, I like to approach sound therapy as a deep listening experience for both them and myself. And, uh, and from there, uh, I start working within biofield and then I work on the body. There is a beautiful moment um, before I bring them back to the room, which is the moment of silence. And I feel that if we want to talk about sound, we should also talk about the importance of silence. And uh, that is the moment where they actually integrate and they absorb the benefits of uh, the practice. And then I gradually bring them back to the room and uh, slowly get in touch again with their bodies, with the room, with the sound of my voice. And so, you know, hopefully they are ready for their lives again. And I, now I'm wondering, so you started as a concert? Yeah, so I am a professional composer and pianist. Right. You know, went to the conservatory at the age of nine, did 10 years there, got three degrees in music, came to the United States because of a scholarship. Then I had the privilege of teaching in some of the most important institutions in these countries. And, uh, you know, recorded albums, arranged. I mean, I don't want to talk about my music career, but you can Google my name and see what I did. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the importance of- Make the uh, leap to sound healing. That's what I'm curious. Like what yeah. kind of shift from mm -hmm. entertainment, which some of us would argue is keeping people down versus the healing that music yeah. and sound can really do. So if you listen to my music, uh, Kelly, uh, I always had this spiritual quest. Every composition, it's a, um, it's a real research. And uh, since when I was very young, I mean, since Silas' age, I was very much into meditation, contemplative practices, even devotional prayer. So I always had this as part of my personal life and so music um, because I was uh, classically trained so there is a lot of discipline but there is also a lot of beauty because you understand that if since a very uh, young age you're exposed to the beauty of the classical composers and classical music together with that level of concentration for many hours every day I think that gives you already a different perspective on things and um, it helps you to just discern 
what you want to um, develop and what you just want to gently, you know, live out of your life. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm very, uh, I'm very committed yoga practitioner as well as meditation, vipassana meditation specifically. And so that it's also something that accompany me throughout my whole life. And so going from music to sound, it's actually is very, very organic for me because it feels like I'm finally integrating who I am with what I do. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I, I mean, you, you have such a gentle, joyful vibe that comes out <laughs> of you. And, you know, I, and, and you really linked. And when you said silence helps you integrate, it just brought me back, back to the 24 years I've been living with that man. And knowing that that is why you two resonated so well at that dinner and, and why he, you know, I mean, I go back to 24 years ago and he's like, could you stop chewing gum? It's so loud. Why do you have to listen to your music so loud? Gosh, you walk so loud. And he would like walk through the house and all of a sudden be behind me. And I never heard him take a step and scare the <laughs> out of me. And I was like, what? Oh my God, could you just walk a little louder because I don't have time to integrate that you're in the room when you walk in silence all the time. But that's why you're so beautiful together. <laughs> because we're such opposites. So, and it's true though, the silence, this integration and the difference of music versus sound. I mean, I had always said, I love music. I love music. And I mean, I've had, you know, piano lessons and I've done violin and I did drumming, you know, when I was in my early twenties and I've always loved to go to concerts and listen to music really loud and everything has changed since I met you. Yeah. I am now like tuning fork girl <laughs> and sound bowl girl. And I got a, a steel tongue drum and I'm like, I just, and of course I should have known this because sound of soul gave me this gift, but this differentiation between music and sound, I think is a key component for people to understand. Excellent. And if you want, we can say a little more about that. Please. So the beauty of music is that there is a very strong cultural component that uh, define that specific genre or style. So for instance, um, let's invite the listener to close their eyes and you know think about a song of their childhood. If you grew up in the States, perhaps you have a specific song. If you were raised in Brazil, it's going to be another one if you're raised in Spain. So as you can see already, just by closing your eyes, two seconds, there is such an important cultural element when you think of music that that allows you to actually identify with music and respond to music. When we talk about sound, because we are also implying this very long, sustained tones, we kind of um, sublimize the process and we make it so essential that we go directly to the source. I personally came to this type of tradition traditions actually because there are many both from the middle east from south asia from a compositional perspective so thanks to my music journey um, i started collaborating and studying you know arabic music indian music and and all of that and so those cultures um, made me understand the importance of this long sustained sound as the base of the whole composition it's the drone, right? And then if we use that element as the main element of a sound practice, we understand that it's very suiting both the brain and the mind. If you ask me, I think it's because unconsciously we go back to the womb and that's what we were hearing. And that's why it's so human. You know, and at the same time, if we want to go a little deeper into spirituality, I feel that sound, it's the bridge between the celestial and the human experience that we have. Because at the end of the day, Kelly, I strongly believe that we are 
you know, divine beings having a human experience. And so sound help us to reconnect with both, with the celestial um, aspect of our being, but also with the profoundly human part, which is what we are. We are in this body, you know, experiencing this body and this mind today, tomorrow. And so we need to um, connect with it in a way that it's very deep. So whenever we talk about sound, I also invite uh, people who are interested in having practices, you know, sound therapy practices to prepare because it's kind of um, silly to think um, that just a sound therapy session can change your life. Um, I think that there is a lot of agency that uh, the client, so the, the actual um, participant uh, has. And in fact, uh, it's, their, it's their work, it, they do their work. You know, when I do a sound therapy session, I am nothing. I'm just facilitating an experience and it's between the sound, them and the source. And, uh, and, and I strongly believe in that because sound can really help auto-regulate and find that deep connection with the body, with the mind, with the spirit. Um, when I say preparation, I also want to elaborate a little more because, you know, um, if we have this integrative approach to health and wellness, we also want to um, uh, establish a routine that keeps us healthy. And you're a doctor, so you know. <laughs> I'm not you a know. doctor, but that's okay. Well, you know, you, you work you work uh, in the medical field, so you know how important it is to have a, um, a routine that is healthy. And, and, and as part of the routine, I also invite people to um, develop awareness in terms of um, sitting in a room, just listening to the sounds around you, observing the sound. Then slowly we draw this attention toward the outside and slowly direct it toward the, you know, inward and start finding that place of stillness. Obviously, many people look at you and say, I have no time to even use the restroom in the morning. And then, you know, you just look at them. I look at them with compassion and say, yes, you do, because you have time to go on Instagram every day. You have time to uh, Twitter every day. So why you don't want to take the time to just sit in silence and just observe what's going on. And I think that it's an important aspect um, for people to uh, consider if they want to integrate in their routine also sound therapy, because it helped them to, again, integrate the whole body-mind experience. And when I talk about my body, obviously I mean the physical, the energetic, the emotional, the intellectual and the spiritual body. It's what we call Panchamaya Gosha system, right? So the five different uh, layers. Mm -hmm. um, if we consider the body just as my arm or my hand, then obviously we are just at the beginning of the journey. Right. There's so much to unpack about what you just said. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, I'm present to, again, what Ian said years ago, go and be. And I was like, what do you want me to do? And go and be is such a key piece to, you might get physically out of pain or physically out of chronic illness, but it doesn't mean you're well until you can sit in silence and truly have that be, I believe the best part of your day. When you're in silence and by yourself, you know, we make jokes around our house when Silas says I'm bored and we go, well, sounds like, you know, I have very good company <laughs> and it's like, you expect us to entertain you the whole day. That's not what this is about. It's about you figuring out what, re what makes you happy and what you can do to, and it's not about the 
experience outside of your body. It's, it's within you. And that makes me think too, about the lights that people are under. Like both of us are lit sitting in sunshine right now. Like I have a window in front of me. I have no lights on a, like I have one little led light that I have tested with a light reader. So I know beautiful sun just come. Yeah. And, (laughs) and I don't often have lights on in my room because first of all, we don't do any fluorescent lights, but even the LED lights, a lot of them aren't that great because there's a sound that they emit that even though we can't hear it, they're emitting sound, which sounds often like serious chaos to the body. Mm -hmm. And and it depends on how deep you want to get. Like people walk in and out of our office and they might just think, wow, they like it a little dim in there for some reason, whatever. They don't realize the reason that we're doing that is because we're trying to limit what the stressors are on the body, which light is is a frequency and it sends mm-hmm. out a sound. We can't auditorily hear it ourselves as a human, but our etherical body is mm-hmm. exposed. And, and that's what I love about your work from what I understand. Can't wait to experience it. And we're going to set up a date that Myra comes. She is only in New York. She can come to Pennsylvania. Absolutely. Anytime. Find a weekend or something where we can have a little bit longer experience where you can treat some individuals maybe do a group site. I know you don't do a ton of groups, but maybe do something along that. We can talk about that, but I just want people to understand that when she starts, she's, and you know, what she said too, is she prepared. So Moira is not your average sounds therapist. I think that's (laughs) been very clear here today. And it's, I don't, my understanding and so many people that experience your work said the same thing that was like, they felt like you could feel and touch their energy field and you knew where it was off because you can almost see the sound. That's what a couple of my, my Dr. Christine Schaffner said, oh, I think she can see sound. I was like, what? She's like, I literally think she can see the vibrations of sound almost because she knew exactly without words where I was feeling resistances. And then that's where you apply sound therapy really outside their body. But then eventually you put the bowls right on their physical body. So they not only hear the sound, but vibrationally feel the sound. And that is incredibly special and and unique. Well, I think that it's profoundly human. And I think that, uh, you know, Again, the, the, the fortune of being trained musically uh, is that I think, or I try to be a very good listener. And so by listening to those sounds carefully, obviously this is an energetic application of sound. I want people also to understand that, you know, like if you work with sound this way, um, you know, you also want to tap into energy work. And, uh, and, and that is why, uh, you know, I, I have this type of approach. So by going through the biofield and listening to what is uh, sounding off, if you will, um, you know, you really go into the energetic field of the person. And so once you get to the body, I like to consider them, the body as the soundboard. So if you think about is an instrument, it's just a human instrument, it's a soundboard. And, um, and that is when the magic really happens because sometimes I feel that I need to work on specific chakras and, um, and so I do. And then, you know, at the end of the session, maybe that person says, yeah, I feel much better and I was experiencing this and that. I also want to point out that the body keeps the score. This is a beautiful book. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's really true. Like what I hear is what the body is telling me. So what we need to take care of is already within us is just be able to um, detect and, um, and just stay there until that energy just keeps flowing again, you know? Sometimes I have to splash people with sound, literally, because the energy is so stuck, not just on a chakra or, you know, it's the whole thing. It's just so thick 
that I just have to splash them with sound like all around and and move things because it's uh, it's very heavy. Uh, other times, you know, people are very open, and so that uh, session is going to be just very restorative and uh, um, or energizing, you know. Or sometimes they have physical pain. Other times, as I know, it's an emotional pain. Everyone is so different, and I try to honor each of them in the way that they need. Um, Another important factor for practitioners, if I can say, the intention is very important. You know, you can't go and practice sound and you're thinking about your hair, your clothes, you have to make dinner, you have to go back home. This is not happening. And another thing is that you cannot impose your agenda on people, meaning, I am so cool, I am a fantastic musician, and now I'm going to do a sound session so that it's cool. Sound is not cool, sound is deep. So rather than imposing our agenda as sound practitioners, we need to become invisible. And so that we let the sound just do the work and we are there to serve Kelly, because that's at the end of the day, what's my work about? I am in service. And I and I feel with muscle testing, that's what you're doing as well, right? You're testing into that energy field, that energy body. And we're just facilitators. We're just, that's the uh, language of the body that I've learned. Whereas you've learned more of the sound language to find where there's resonance, where there's conflict and to help get rid of the conflict and allow harmony. Because when you have harmony, right? The body's in healing mode. And that's, it, it's amazing. Like people see you for all sorts of ailments, right? All sorts of diseases, all sorts of issues. And could you speak to a little bit about the results that you've experienced and why? <laughs> yeah. One of the great things about Moira is that she's not only an artist, but she's a scientist. And she really, like I am, is really interested in proving on an empirical based way, the data that we've collected, I, that I and I've collected for 17 years in practice that you've collected for as long as you've been doing this, because everybody is individual and unique. So you've got to really have a lot of wherewithal to do that. But can you mm -hmm. speak about that yeah. aspect? Yeah, first of all, I want to say why this is very important to me, because I strongly believe that sound can really help people. So my ultimate goal is to uh, introduce sound in clinical settings in a way that it's uh, mainstream. So if I have uh, the opportunity to partner up with doctors and clinics, uh, I'm doing it now you know, on a very small scale. Hopefully uh, this type of studies will become bigger and bigger. But if we can create protocols where we have specific um, type of sounds for specific type of conditions. And obviously we want to leave uh, the individuality of each person shine, yet there are certain things that I know I can use. For instance, I know that I use more consonants, so I use certain type of intervals, okay? I know that that has a restorative and balancing effect. If I want to move energy within the body, I'm going to use dissonance more. So I use other type of intervals. So even just understanding what, why, where, what type of frequencies, meaning the actual hertz uh, associated with what, right? Um, then we can create type of protocols. And from that, uh, we can create a, a program. That's, that's my dream, to create a program so that I can train healthcare professionals and also energy workers so they can integrate, incorporate sound in their own practice and uh, apply, you know, to, to their own skill set. That's my dream. And, and that is my dream too, because there are patterns, right? For every diagnosed illness. And Louise Hay looked at that from a personality perspective and affirmations and beliefs. You're looking at it from sound. Other practitioners have looked at it from you know, all different aspects, but the reality is there are patterns and patterns are frequencies and vibrations. And if you can mm -hmm. break those patterns and frequencies up, you know, it's amazing. I just yeah. have to tell you, 
story. My mother was um, diagnosed with COVID a couple of weeks ago and was put in the hospital. And I was concerned because she has every comorbidity on the list. Um, and so I left where I was at in South Carolina and got to her in upstate New York, was able to be on the floor with her for four hours a day. I don't want to say the hospital because they broke a lot of rules to get me on the floor as an unvaccinated person on the COVID floor that doesn't work for the hospital. But I, one of the, my mother's a musician and she's a violin and viola and she, that was her major in college was music. And um, I had done a sound of soul on her once when she was 80. And I knew if I could get in that hospital and I could do a sound of soul on her, I knew it was the biggest thing I could do for her outside of kiss and hug her. And her CRP, which is a indication of inflammation in the body, which we like to be under like 10 was at 96 day three in the hospital. I got on the floor at eight o'clock at night. I was able to administer sound of soul and the light. I had a light Weber watch on her as well. So she was getting light frequency and she was getting sound therapy. And the next day when they tested her blood, her CRP went from 96 to 52. Yeah. And every day she listened to her sound of soul clip. And it was so funny because she said, as soon as I started playing it and it was converting her heart rate variability into music and I picked viola because that's her instrument. She goes, oh, where did you get this? This is my favorite song. I said, mom, this has never been composed before. This is your heart composing this music right now. She goes, no, this I've played this before. This is my favorite song. It's so good that you have this. And I was like, I finally just gave in. Like she was a little delirious still. She was, had been really sick for many days. And I was like, yeah, it's your favorite song. Just keep listening to it. And actually that red, it is. If you think about it, it is. It's her favorite song. It's her. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I think there's so much, I feel, I know that there's so much that we, I would love to see a hospital that considers sound and light and love mm -hmm. in addition to the IVs and the injections and all the other things that all of it helps. We can't take any of it out. Like they saved her life as much as probably the love and the sound saved her life and helped her reconnect back to her. I have never felt so connected to my mother as I have in the last I'm sure years, ever in my life. I'm sure. And this is also another important point, uh, Kelly. Thank you for bringing it up because sometimes, you know, um, there are practices that they don't involve any type of wording at all. And these are part of somatic practices that um, are so precious. Uh, this is important for uh, us to, um, to highlight because uh, anytime there is word in between, there is a, a level of um, uh, cognitive level there that in a way gets in the way and sometimes when you want to um, activate the parasympathetic response if you want to reduce inflammation I'm not sure that's the best way to go um, instead using type of practices that go directly uh, to the body to the most um, intimate part of the body like your heart um, and uh, your body sounds really, uh, then you can really connect and there is no um, wording, um, classification in the way, there is none of that. There is just experiential healing. And I think that's very, very important. Yeah, like, well, I think what you're saying and correct me if I'm wrong, is like words limit us, whereas frequency yes. is unlimited. Correct. And, you know, it's, and we emit a frequency and we receive frequencies and we are a frequency machine at some level. Mm -hmm. And I think what you said a little bit ago in the beginning was we are vibrational beings, or I don't, I don't know your exact. We link. are, we are divine beings having divine, a human experience. Having a human experience. That's beautiful wording. And, and I want people listening to really let that land we've talked about it in many ways but to really hear ha 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 that there is such an amazing 
capacity for healing that's right there that we have yet to really approach. I don't feel like, like we said, you know, sounds great and a lot of awareness in the last 10 years. We have barely approached, however, oh, yeah. the capacity of it. I Absolutely. mean, I, know, I personally feel that regardless if you get COVID or the vaccine or the gene therapy or whatever it is, and you want to undo it, the best way to do it is with sound and light. I don't mm -hmm. care what they throw at us frequency always wins and frequency nullifies things. So you can, you know, waves and particles is where it's at. You know, Tesla said years ago, if you want to understand the universe, first look to energy, vibration, and frequency, because that is it. That's all there really is. We are, we are in, like she said, really, Really enjoying this physical being and this human experience and please enjoy this human experience it's so joyful and so amazing you get to meet amazing people like Moira that hug with such light and love and and a, like authenticity and beauty that you just instantly are like I want more more of Moira more of Moira and the because she her sound that I I can almost feel is just clear and when we are clear like that, there's no time for illness. There's no time for disease. There's no time for pain. The body doesn't experience that because it's all in harmony. And mm -hmm. it's, it's so simple, but it's not simple. It's yeah. simple. And I would like to add just uh, something that uh, suffering in general, I think it's based on the misconception of separation. So if we start also understanding that within our body, let's start small, right? So my physical body is directly connected to the energetic, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual. So I'm not separating those. I am uniting them. But then if we expand and we understand that you and me, we are one, we are connected, right? So I also can understand that by loving you, and respecting you, I am loving and respecting myself. And then if we apply that to a larger and larger and larger scale, we understand that through unity, we can also create an environment that fosters um, health and wellness. Because if we create separation and division, that is where suffering starts because mm -hmm. we feel disconnected we feel distant right instead we are united we are one and i think also this um philosophical approach if you will to wellness it's very important again all the preparation we were talking about because this way what i think then translates in what i say the way i say it and then what i do and we if we can all do that and we honor each one identity and uh, needs, then we foster, we, we really work toward a society that also um, uh, is based on unity and therefore is open to the idea of being well. Because this is the point, Kelly, we need to love the idea that being well is what we deserve as well. And at the end of the day, once we do that and we start applying through our thoughts, to the, the way we talk, to our action and our jobs and any job, you know, that contributes to society, we start creating value wherever we are, at home, with our colleagues, on the subway. And so, you know, that is already an incredible step forward um, toward a society that um, wants to create wellness, wants to create a healthy society. That's what I think. Well, she just solved all the world problems. That's <laughs> easy. I think that's fabulous. I really do. I, I, I completely resonate with what you just said, a hundred percent. Um, there's so much 
lack of deserving that I see. I mean, that's why when I do our sessions of Flow Prezzo, I play affirmations of self-love in people's ears because I have yet to meet the person that walks in and goes, I just love myself so much. I've made myself sick. It's completely the opposite. I don't know how to love myself. I don't know how to receive love. I don't know how to get love. I don't think I deserve love. And these are not necessarily conscious programs, but programs that are under under everything as the undertone versus the overtone. Mm -hmm. And we can shift that into an overtone of compilation of like, you resonate with wellness because you are source, you are God, you are light energy, you are magical and being human is magical. Just join our magic carpet ride and you will find out when you truly resonate with you and are willing to face whatever those feelings are inside you and move through them and get to the other side. It's all beautiful harmony. Yeah, it's uh, it's very important to talk about these things because again, it is uh, an illusion that through one hour of sound therapy session, I can help you, you know, solve uh, yeah. your mystery because at the end of the day, it's your own mystery, uh, but they can facilitate a process. And if you have um, the capacity and the willingness to keep the journey going and go deeper and deeper and deeper, then sound can be part of your journey of self-discovery, um, of self-study, and obviously uh, self-love. Oh, that's beautiful. So I want to ask you a couple other questions because we're running out of time, but tell us where they can find. And first of all, I want to say this to everybody before I ask you that question, I really truly want Moira to come to Pennsylvania. And I know that January, February, you know, can be colder months, but send us messages, emails, comments in here, please. If that's something you would be interested in. So we know best how to manage that, how many days that people would be interested in to physically come and have sessions with Moira, Sarah, myself, Ian, all fell in love with her when we were together in BRMI, as did everybody at that place. She was really the highlight, the overtone <laughs> of the event and got us all to listen every morning and really start to communion in a way that you really made that event very special and very spiritual because there was this other element versus just learning the music and just or the music is just learning the medicine and, mm -hmm. and learning the networking of the right people and all of that. But you really brought in that emotional piece as did I, and when he talked about his, his topic and for me with lymph, it's all about frequency and vibrations and with the fascia, right? Because if the fascia is not open, the frequencies mm -hmm. and the vibrations can't come in. So one is how do they contact you? How do they find out more about you? Can you give out your, your stats? Yeah, absolutely. I have a website, which is, uh, you know, moiralubianco.com. And there, there is the sound page. There is the connect form. So they, they contact me through the website. I also have a Facebook page, uh, if that's, you know, what they prefer. And they can, they can contact me there as well. And do you only see people in person? Do you do any, yeah. any kind of virtual? Yeah, no. So, right. yeah. Now, I, I, I know we're going to get that question. So I just want to address it now. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I am just there. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I believe in sound as being in the room, acoustic sound. And, you know, I, I need to have that. Exp that's the way I do it. But, you know, if they want to have sound sessions online, there are fantastic sound practitioners all around the world. It's just not my approach. Yeah, no, I understand. That. It's not people ask that about sound of souls or a long distance approach. And I was like, no, because there's no way to replicate you feeling and hearing that sound in person versus over the waves of the internet. And, and then and also, you know, we, we want to sorry to interrupt, but that's the reason why we, we should say also, you know, like because it's not just an audible experience, right? So it's, it's not, not just audible. what you hear, right? It's also what you experience on the body. So if I just give you half of the experience, I feel bad. I want you to experience sound the best you can. That is why I only see people 
you know, uh, in person. And I only do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Right. Oh, so there goes our group. So we'll just, <laughs> that's okay. She answered that question. That's awesome. So now the last question I have is, and, and you may have already touched on, it, I have a feeling, but that being said, one of my goals is to change for three generations because then I know it will be long lasting and we have made a true tidal wave shift. Um, so that's 23 billion people because we're at 7.6 billion people right now. So I figure eh, three generations will probably have 23 billion people. Um, but right now we have 7.6 billion people around about in this world. If you had a microphone and they could auditorily hear everything you're about to say, what would be the secret that you would like to give them to their life, to having a successful life, meaning a happy, joyful, easy experiential life. I mean, you embody mm -hmm. ease and beauty and loveliness and all of that. So how do we get to that, Moira? I just uh, invite them to close their eyes, connect to their breath, and just within silence to just repeat to themselves, I am a divine being having a human experience. And just breathe through it. If we understand that we're all divine beings having a human experience, we connect directly to the source but we also observe our human experience. We don't judge it. We don't want to own it. We don't get attached to it, not discard it, we just observe it. If we understand that we are directly connected to the source, we want to create value every day, every moment. And that's when we start honoring ourselves the people around us, the work that we do. And with that, we find a place of integration. You are such a gift. And that, you are a gift. That was a great gift you just gave this community because I think that out of all the secrets that I've asked, I can't say that any one is my particular favorite yet giving people an experience mm -hmm. of that secret is what you just did. And that's been my message for however many episodes we're into now, I don't know, 70, 80 episodes, is that truly from our heart to yours, you got this. Mm -hmm. You got this. Thank you so very much. Thank you, my love. You are so amazing as are you. And we look forward to everybody connecting with us and letting us know who would like a session with Moira so we can organize that sooner than later. And we can spend some time with you on a personal level as well. And when I come to New I York, I'm that. certainly going to reach out Please. to you. I will. I will. Please. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank everybody. you so much for having me. Of course, thank you so much for spending your time with us, everybody today, and really being present and always commenting and sharing. I really appreciate everybody in our community and all your loyalty to listening to this podcast. I see it when I travel. I'm very much humbled by how many people come up to me and say, oh my God, I listen to your podcast every week. And I am so honored that you all do that and spend your time with me. And I'm so honored that people like Moira join our community and, and help you expand a little bit more into knowing that you got this. Yes, you, you do. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all next time on the beats. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us and spending your time here with us at the beats with your host, Kelly Kennedy. And I know today more than ever before, you now know better how your body works. And at the very least, we hope we've helped you raise some questions and help you continue to investigate. We are here to help you naturally optimize a better version and vision of yourself on every single level. And after today, you can better engage your innate intelligence and allow for proper regulation and proper regeneration. Make sure to subscribe to never meet, miss a beat again. 
We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. And just a reminder that this podcast is for educational purposes only. This podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or professional advice and care by your doctor or other qualified medical professionals. This podcast is created with the intention to provide information and education. This podcast is created with the understanding that it does not constitute professional advice or medical services. If you are looking for help in your journey and seek a qualified medical practitioner, or if you're looking for a biological, not meds practitioner, we can help you. Someone who's trained and a licensed health coach and someone that can help you make changes, especially when it comes to your health. That's what not meds mission is about. I hope you have enjoyed listening again to this podcast. It's one of my favorite things to do. And if you do, please feel free to share it with your friends, your colleagues, uh, for the tips of living the biological foundational life and living in the flow. And if you have been listening and love the show, please do leave comments. We love reading your comments. We really do. And you can subscribe to us wherever you hear your podcast. Thank you so much from our heart to yours.